So, when I hear about the future of work, I hear a lot of worry about jobs. Makes sense, right? We see a lot of statistics like this one. 50% of all the activities that people do at workplaces today could be automated with technology we already have. So what does that mean about where we're going? But, you know, we're worried about the truck drivers. We're worried about the bank tellers. Here's a new one. You can now be worried about baristas. This is an automated coffee shop in a mall in San Francisco. But here's the thing. I think that we are already seeing a lot of impacts on jobs, changing jobs, that make it so that Americans aren't keeping up with where they need to be anyway. Right? If you look at this graph, you can see that while productivity has gone up over the last 30 years, GDP, our collective wealth, has continued to go up. Incomes have flatlined, right? Americans aren't keeping up with what's going on. And when you think about what we were promised with jobs, you can see the same thing, right? It used to be you could get a job, be promised 401k, promised health care for you and your family, maybe even a pension. You knew that every year you'd get a raise. And if you stayed in that job long term, you could move up the ladder. But I think that one of the impacts that technology is having on our workplaces is that they're no longer communities. They're becoming transactional, right? We're continuing to exchange small amounts of labor for small amounts of cash. So think about it this way. When I am taking a lift, I'm rating my driver every time I finish a ride. Right? And that makes sense. They want to make sure that they know. Lyft wants to make sure they know how my experience is. You know, did my driver do a good job? It's basic customer service. But I think that this is actually changing the way that we think about our relationships with each other more broadly. Right? Our relationships are becoming more transactional with our workplaces. If you look at the new options that Lyft provides for ratings, now I'm not just rating my drivers as I tip them. I'm also telling Lyft whether my driver was a good driver. Did they have a clean car? Did we have a fun conversation? So I'm starting to tip my drivers based on the value of the conversation that we had. OK, so it starts with rating drivers on conversations now. But at what point do we get to the point where we're rating people based on every interaction that we have? OK, so that's where we are today. We're rating folks. This is the trend. So what does that mean for the future of work? Doomsday prepping. <laughs> I'm serious. OK, so we're going to spend the next six minutes that we have together. I've got a prepping 101 slide from the Prepper Journal. I want to introduce you to the survivalist mom. She's got an excellent blog, Good for Prepper Kids. And there's even a show on National Geographic called Doomsday Preppers. Yes, I see we have some fans. OK, so I actually can't teach you everything there is to know about prepping in the next six minutes. But I bring up preppers because I actually think that this is the future of our transactional relationships. Preppers are transactional relationships taken to the extreme. So if you're not familiar with doomsday preppers, essentially they're a community of folks who are preparing for apocalypse. That could be climate disaster or an EMP attack or zombies, obviously, right? And the plan is to prepare for the future by building skills. So you need to take a carpentry class, or you need to learn food preservation techniques so you can join a prepper community for safety. But the thing is, joining these prepper groups is like a job interview, OK? They're not going to let you in unless you have a skill that they need. So according to preppers, the future of work is making sure that you have skills that you can trade for security. The problem is that I think that when we talk about skills and automation and technology, instead of talking about the future of work, we're actually talking about the future of jobs. OK, so what is the point of a job? A job gives me economic security, financial stability. Right? If I have a full-time job, I want to make sure I can pay my bills and make sure that I can relieve myself of anxiety about my financial future. But let me ask you this. What is your life's work? Is your life's work different from your job? Are there people who do valuable work that don't get paid for it? 
you know, I think about my mom when I ask this question, right? My mom stayed at home for all of my childhood to take care of me and my brother. Trust me when I say it was a lot of work. Um, now she's a realtor, right? But she still takes care of my grandma who lives at home as well. Is the only valuable work that she's doing at her job as a realtor? Think about volunteers. So I started my career in Atlanta as a grassroots organizer. And all of the in-person outreach that my campaign did was dependent on volunteers, people who wanted to build a community with other people who cared about the same issues and wanted to see the same kind of change that they did. We can talk about arts and culture, entrepreneurship, this really important TED talk I'm giving you right now. You know, much of the work, the scope of valuable work is much broader than the scope of paid jobs. So I think that preppers are actually talking and planning for the future of jobs. If we want to plan for the future of work, what does that make us? So I want to invite you to join me as an intentional optimist. And I'll tell you the difference between preppers, doomsday preppers, and intentional optimists. Preppers look at the future and believe that we have control over individuals. While we, as intentional optimists, know that we can shape our collective future. So if that's what we're thinking about, we're thinking about how things are changing. We're trying to make sure that people have control over their future and they can do meaningful work while having economic security. What's our plan? Universal basic income is a federal program that's designed to guarantee economic security. So basic income is a structure that we as Americans can create to ensure that people can take care of their basic needs. It's very simple. Essentially, we can use this collective abundance that we have, this collective wealth, to ensure that every American gets a check every month to make sure they can pay for the basics. So imagine this. You, your friends, your parents, your siblings, having the security to know that every month, no matter what, you'll get a check. Let's say it's $1,500 to make sure you can pay for those basics that need to be taken care of. Imagine the opportunities that that would open up. Now, basic income isn't meant to be a substitute for work or for jobs, not at all, right? Basic income gives us the security, the stability, and the freedom to choose what we're doing with our time. Think of it as a platform. Basic income provides Americans with the economic security to weather transitions and times of change, while also giving us all the peace of mind that far few, too few of us have. Basic income gives us the chance to walk away from bad jobs. It gives us the chance to fight for better ones. And it gives us the option to choose to spend our time on work that is valuable. Basic income recognizes our right to dignity without asking us to prove our own worth. So here's what I want to leave you with. Work is about the collective, while jobs are about the individual. The future of work is about us. It's about our relationships to each other and the world. Jobs are a means of supporting ourselves as we get there. Preppers will convince you that the only control that you have over the future is individual, right? You better take that hunting class and hope that you can find a group that will let you join. I'm hoping instead that you'll join me as an intentional optimist. We have control over the structures that shape the future, and there's no doubt that we are stronger together. So let's fight for the future of work with universal basic income. Thank you.